this is Katie from Katie Goes Platinum, and today I have my first ever interview, which is with Mandy Mae Cheatham, the lovely actress, silver hair advocate, podcaster, and all around Renaissance lady. <laughs> <laughs> Jackass of all trades. <laughs> so, why did you decide to let your hair go gray? Oh, um, I'm going to jump right in. Great, okay. Well, it was a really slow process. A slow decision-making process. I wanted to stop dyeing it. I think I felt this grief when I saw the silver start to come in. Um, not grief because I was getting older, but grief because I felt like I was betraying myself in some way. Like your body was betraying you? No, like I was, by covering it, I was betraying the truth about what my hair looked like and what I looked like and the fact that I was aging. Oh, right, that totally makes sense. Yeah, it was like um, a, a lie that I was telling the world, and I felt like I wasn't bearing witness to my own life. Right, you were being authentic to who you really were. Yeah, yeah. And then, from a vanity perspective, I was starting to lose my hair. From an allergy to the hair dye? I think so, yeah. Um, and definitely had the allergy. We had figured out... Uh, this wonderful woman that I see who still cuts my hair, Danica Marie, down in, in downtown LA, we had figured out that uh, I was allergic to the peroxide. And I had been getting my hair dyed for 13 years and it started burning like, you know, maybe year five. Wow, so just like me, you let it go on for a while even though it was hurting you. Forever. Yeah. Until she finally was like, you're probably just allergic to this. And at that point, I was so over dyeing my hair anyway, but she helped me figure out that there was a whole other line that I could use that didn't burn my scalp, which was amazing, but I was over it by then. And then when I started doing research after I finished dyeing, I realized how many chemicals I was putting into my skin. Right. It was terrifying when you realized it. And I, I remember knowing that they said that there was a tie-in between brunette dye and bladder cancer, uh -huh. and I kept doing it. Like, uh, it. It's kind of crazy when I look back, like why did I, what, that show scared me off right away. So. Yeah, I, I found a statistic about um, African American women because the pigment is so dark. I think it's like a, almost, it's 40 or 50 percent increase risk. There's a party going on. Okay. <laughs> Downtown LA. Yeah. Um, I think it's 40 or 50 percent increased risk of hormone related cancers in oh, African really? American women, like I think breast cancer specifically, because of the dark pigment. And never mind um, hairstylists, hair colorists, their increased risk is much, much higher than the average population. So there's, come on. Right. It makes sense. I've written as Expose on um, nail salons a few years ago in the yeah. New York Times. Did you read that one? No, I heard that it's a problem though. Yeah, they said that, that the young ladies doing it, they were having trouble with fertility and with birth defects and everything from all the fumes from the nail salon and the nail polish remover and the other things that they do. So yeah. I guess it does make you think more about what we're putting on our bodies. Absolutely. So starting on a light note. Yeah. So how long have you been going gray? Um, I mean, how long have you been ditching the diet? Oh, okay. So it's now the end of May, mm -hmm. and I stopped. The last dye I did was in early December, and it was a semi-permanent, just on the roots, because I didn't have time. I used to mix a root color, do the roots, and then do a semi all over to like brighten it up. Right. Um, so I did a semi-permanent, went back to Toronto, and then hid in my mom's house, essentially, for four weeks. Right. <laughs> so for the initial stages, I didn't really see anyone, and then the first time I was like out in public was on the plane coming back from L.A. to Toronto. Yeah. Or something coming back from Toronto to L.A., and I took my hat off and walked to the bathroom, and it was like terrifying. It's <laughs> <laughs> like being lady to get out of a, you know, walk. Like you feel naked. Yeah, okay. totally felt naked. No one noticed, I'm sure, yeah. but I was like freaked out. I know you really feel like that, and uh, you know how back in the old days a girl would get pregnant by accident, and then her parents would ship her off to like some other state, and then come back nine months later, and they'd have a new baby to adopt. Yeah. And, and it's like, oh, we just happened to be traveling in Africa, and we, ha we found this baby that we wanted to adopt. <laughs> and it's like, no, it's your daughter's baby. Yeah. That's why I feel like I used to think, maybe I could just go move somewhere for a year. Mm -hmm. And then come back with gray hair, mm -hmm. which is crazy. Yeah. 
I feel a bit that way with my career. Mm -hmm. Like my agents are just sort of waiting it out to see how I look before they respond to any of my emails or decide if they want to like get rid of me. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. That's how the um, that's what your podcast is all about, right? The, uh, not all about the it's uh, going great. in Tinseltown is Mandy's podcast, and can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. Well, I think I just had so many burning questions, like. Mm -hmm that I couldn't answer. I didn't realize when I stopped dyeing my hair that I was gonna open up this Pandora's box of, um, of, of the exploration of self-objectification, let's say. Like, right. I didn't realize the extent to which I was relying on my looks to as my identity. Right. And my hair color was associated with that. And I always felt like the hair was the thing that I could control as I, as I was aging. And this, like, how could I be having this kind of like relationship with my own body that's so negative and just right. getting worse? And I just realized that it wasn't sustainable, but I didn't know the answers as to how to make it sustainable. Right. So that was one of the reasons why I started the podcast. The second was I just always wanted to have a podcast. Um, and then the third was specifically in Hollywood. I wanted to like out the ageism. Oh, right. It's horrible. It's horrible. And it's not just women and men in front of the camera. It's women and men behind the camera. Executives who feel like they're not going to be heard or writers or what have you that feel like they have to get everything done before a certain time or they're going to be aged out. Well, I had a friend who was in the entertainment industry and the new HR lady would put up a little screen in the cafeteria saying happy so-and-so birthday, yeah. like happy 30th birthday so-and-so. And she knew her 50th birthday was coming up, and she asked them not to put it up there. Yeah. And they did, and about three months later, she lost her job. Come she on. Always, yeah. She always felt like it was related to the fact that people now knew she was 50. And her job had nothing to do with being in front of the camera. It was all, she had years of experience um, doing what she did, and it was like movie distribution or something, so yeah. not like you're seeing people. So, yeah. Yeah, it's depressing. It's real. Mm -hmm. It's real. And, and we talk about incidents, specific incidents in the podcast I've had casting directors, agents, actresses, and then um, hair and makeup artists, photographers. So it's not just specifically TV and film. You, you've been on my podcast. Right. It's like a jumping off point for us. Right. That's yeah. just so nice. It, you, you have a wide range of people that you talk to. Yeah. Um, how has the reaction been so far? Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. To the podcast. Yes, yeah, to the podcast. Yeah. And to the great. <laughs> Gray hair? <laughs> yes, mixed. Um, actually, it's been pretty positive to the gray hair as well. Now that people, I think, know that I'm not having a nervous breakdown. Right. <laughs> there is that moment where people, you think people are looking at you like you either can't afford to do your hair or you're having some mental problems. Yeah. Or you're, lo you know, you're losing it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But and then, then when I yell at drivers on the street. Right. They're, they're Full, full on in the mental breakdown. <laughs> right. And now it's different. Like it's a different perspective I have when I yell at people on the street. Right. Because I do that. I live downtown. It's crazy. You I have no choice. People try and run me over with their cars and whatever. And I'm like, Are you kidding me? And then I'm like, You're now a gray haired woman yelling at someone. So now you're that crazy old lady, as opposed to before when I was just like legitimately allowed to be angry for someone trying to run me over. It's a very weird perception shift. Yeah, I have the same thing. I think I told you how I had an accident in my kitchen. Did I tell you about this? No. Uh, this is so dumb. I am, as I get older, I sometimes want to be comfortable when I'm home, so I unbutton my pants. I had dress pants on, I unbutton my pants. I was lying down, just reading a book in my room, when I suddenly realized I really wanted some cheesecake, which is also not really like me, but I was like, I just, I knew we had cheesecake, I'm like, I want some. So just body da like all happy, walk into the kitchen to get my freaking cheesecake. And I slipped in a pool of water for my husband doing the dishes. And I guess water is just going everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I slipped, fell backwards, hit my back on the open dishwasher door, oh. and then bounced off that and hit my head twice on the little lamp. So I'm lying there, and my hair, gray hair is like all over my face, which somehow made me feel like like this very elderly lady who'd taken a spill. Right. And now we had to worry. I, I broke my head. Right. And so, I, and I was crying because it hurt. And my teenage son came in. He's like, oh, mom, you know, let me help you. Yeah. And he put his arm around me very sweetly and like lifted me up. And when he lifted me up, my pants fell down. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, the circle's complete. I am the crazy gray-haired lady who's losing it. So, but I, I, and I thought a lot about it. Like, 
I'm trying to spread the word that gray hair isn't necessarily old. Right. A lot of us went fully gray in our 20s or 30s, but we've been dying it. But it's so ingrained in our culture to think of gray equals elderly. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with being elderly, but when you're 30, 40, 50, you're not really always ready to be labeled like that. I don't know if I'd be ready to be labeled like that when I'm 90. I know. Mm-hmm. And what is, I mean, what does that even mean? Right. And I think that's the interesting thing that we are exploring in the podcast is that, you know, if this story that I was telling myself that my identity is related to how I look is true, mm-hmm. then what other stories are, I, I mean, it's, okay, wait, if this story that I've been telling myself is not true, right. then what else is not true, you know? Right. So, like, the one story that I told myself was that I can, I have to dye my hair. I'm 30 and I have to dye my hair because that's what everyone does. Right. Because I have gray. And I never even questioned it until the last two years. Yeah, me too. So what else have I been telling myself that I haven't been questioning? Yeah, I, I, we've talked about this, and I've thought about this a lot too, because I feel like, I think that's why I felt so joyful this past 15 months I've been not coloring, mm-hmm. is it kind of, I think I thought I was on a certain path, like, oh, you're getting older, and these are the things that are going to happen to you. And then now that I've discovered, like, hey, wait a second, I don't have to dye my hair, then I discovered other talents or things I had. It's like I got more energy or got energized to see that the, the future didn't have to be what I was picturing. Yes. You know? So, yes. yes, questioning your beliefs and feeling free. Yeah. Yeah, it's been nice. Yeah. And then also this wonderful added experience of feeling like I'm contributing to the change. Right. You know, by creating the podcast and doing this work with you and, and the conference. You know, I'm... I'm providing um, alternative imagery to what we've always seen. One of the experiences I had early on when I stopped dying was I went to an art fair. Mm-hmm. And I used to be an art dealer and um, I saw all the images of the beautiful women, the muses and the paintings and the sculptures and what have you and I used to go and see myself. Uh-huh. They all had long hair and similar face structure or whatever I thought. You know? Yeah. And then when I was there, I was like, oh my God, I'm not, I'm not one of them anymore. Yeah, this is strange feelings. Yeah, and then I thought, no, well, I must change this. I must present imagery and put imagery out into the world that is different from what, what we've only ever seen since antiquity. Right. You know? Which is not flattering to the older ladies. No, it just doesn't include us. Right, it doesn't include us. I was thinking about that today because I know a lot of older women say they feel invisible to our culture when they get to be a certain age. And I feel like our gray hair movement is kind of saying, I'm not going to be invisible. Yeah. I'm not going to let you make me invisible. Yeah. And that's what I like. So. I have a song called Invisible. I'm not, in, I'm not Invisible. Oh, I love that. Yeah. All right. Um, now, can you tell us a little bit about the conference? Yes. Okay. So the conference is taking place at the end of July uh, 2020 in Los Angeles. And I came on board... About a month, I guess, after Marina and Karen had decided they wanted to have a meetup of some sort. Right. Their client, Silver Sisters 2020. And I was like, hey, I've run a bunch of, like, large-scale events, Mm -hmm. so I would love to participate and help you. And they were gracious enough to let me kind of talk them into letting me (laughs) help them. And it's been amazing so far. They're both so passionate about the community and have developed really strong friendships with women all over the world and really want to create a space for people to come together and feel elevated and united and empowered. Right. You know? I think it'll be great and it'll be fun and informative. And I think um, that's... I'm getting all screwed up. I think um, I think the convention will be just a great like catalyst to propel this movement. Absolutely, and you don't always. One of my friends said this thing. She has a podcast called uh, Firecracker Department, and it's about women in entertainment. She interviews these wonderful women, and she brought this team together to help support the podcast and also to help us um, elevate each other in our own artistic pursuits and. She said, it's been really interesting building this group of women around me because when I have support, I feel like I can dream bigger. Right, that's totally true. That's a great point. Yeah, and so I think that's what we're reaching for with the conference is pulling us all together and being like, okay, this is real. Right. We're not alone. And if that's true, 
than right. what else is true. Right. So not just dismantling the myths that we have been believing, because that's stage one, is mm -hmm. like f figuring out all the things that aren't true, and then looking beyond and saying, okay, well, what is true? What kind of what kind of effect can we have on the world? What kind of art can we put out into the world? What kind of imagery? What kind of things do we want to tell the world about what this transition is like and, and what it's like to be an older woman? And what kind of things do we want to give to younger women to help their transition and help them just live joyously at whatever age or stage they're at, you know? Right. I think that's one thing that's so wonderful. Like, sometimes I look back at the women who came before us, like our mothers and, and sisters in the 70s, mm -hmm. and they had to pave the way for a lot of things. And now we are. And I also see younger women seem to be embracing this. I mean, there's a lot of great sil silver sisters on Instagram and a lot of girls who haven't even considered dyeing their hair. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. I don't think it ever would have occurred to me not to, like yeah. you said. Not mm -hmm. 10 years ago. It right. wasn't a thing. It wasn't an option. Five years ago, it wasn't an option. No. It just seems like lately. Yeah. And we've been, you know, it's a, collect it's a collective experience. Women have been having a global collective experience, no matter what side of the argument you sit on. Me Too had a huge effect on our collective consciousness. Right. And I think that it's not a mistake that we're coming to the point that we're coming to now with the gray hair thing. It's the next line right. in, the, in this feminist movement that we're in the middle of. And, you know, we all went through the stages of grief together. And now we're at the stage of, okay, what are we going to do about it? Right, I agree. You know? Yeah, I think it was a big catalyst for a lot of us. So, um, so the convention will take place in July, and where can people find information about it? Well, right now we just have the Instagram account, Silver Sisters 2020. Soon we're going to have the website up end of July this year, and then we'll start collecting email addresses and introducing people to ways in which they can get involved earlier than later. I think we'll probably have... Um, some founding founding members and people who want to get on board early, you know, it's a really special thing I think to be part of in the first year, and I'm looking forward to meeting everyone obviously, but also exploring everyone else's ideas for now what right yeah as well you know it'll be exciting yeah and then if people want to listen to your podcast I know they can find it on iTunes and Spotify and where else. Can they find it? Uh, it's on Stitcher, it's on uh, Google Play, and it's on oh. I'm having a craft disease moment. C can't remember a effing thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, YouTube! YouTube, okay. It's on the YouTube! Everyone is on the YouTube! <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Okay, well thank you for participating today. And I will um, hopefully be back here to talk to you again soon as we get closer to the convention. Absolutely. I'm excited. Great. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Thank you.